Hi, I'm Dave Hobbs for Team AVI. Welcome to this program on alternate uses for your EVAP smoke tester. Now, a lot of people think, well, emissions, the EVAP emission systems, that's the only thing we can use these leak testers and smoke machines on. Not the case. You may have already used it for some other things. There's a lot of uses still yet. We're going to cover in this program. Now, here's the problem we're going to look at today. 93 Dodge Dakota, as I mentioned, an air conditioning problem. Insufficient cooling. I've already hooked up the AC manifold pressure gauge set. Things are fine as far as refrigeration. Just don't think we're getting the recirc door working right. It's a vacuum operated system, so let's use the pressure and smoke tester to see what we can do quickly diagnosing the problem without having to spend hours and hours looking for a leaky vacuum hose. Let's hook it up under the hood now. And we're looking for an HVAC vacuum hose leak. Well, we know vacuum's source from the intake manifold goes through the bulkhead, found the little hard plastic hose that we're looking for, and it was on uh, the intake manifold T, so that's so far so good. And we knew it was because we're getting the mode changes of air distribution. We're just not getting recirc, or it doesn't feel like we are. So I'm going to pull the hose that supplies vacuum to the HVAC system off of my T, and I'm going to insert the smoke machine slash pressure tester into that nipple on the end of that hard plastic hose. So now I'm feeding through the bulkhead. Instead of vacuum with the engine running, I'm going to feed a little bit of pressure in there and see how much leaks out as I manipulate the HVAC controls inside the vehicle. All right, very simple. We've taken the hose of supply of vacuum to this closed circuit HVAC vacuum uh, system under the hood, took it off, put our pressure in there. Now we're going to cycle the controls on the HVAC back and forth. Everything that has anything to do with vacuum, we're going to move it back and forth and watch the flow meter. If there's no leaks, the flow meter ball will be on the bottom. Let's go ahead and turn the machine on. It pops up for a second and she comes down to the bottom. Now, I'm going to hit my mode switches, actuate various supplies of vacuum for different, different diaphragms. Yeah, it bumps up a little bit, but then comes back to bottom. Now I'm going to move the slider switch back and forth, which controls my recirc. Oh, I start to see something and the ball's floating. You know what that means, Tex. If the ball's floating, it's time to start smoking. Well, take a look at this bright light. You can see the smoke. Looks like we've got maybe the split in on the tip of this vacuum hose fitting. Now we're looking at the Ultra Trace UV dye. Wow, you can really see it there. Well, we know how to fix a piece of vacuum hose that's got a split in. We'll simply chop it off put a piece of eighth inch rubber hose on it. It'll seal good. The HVAC worked great. Started it up. Recirc worked wonderful and no vacuum leaks. We fixed this cheap. We found it quickly and we did it with pressure and smoke. Now I've got a 1998 Olds and Trig 3800. We're going to use the smoke tester to locate vacuum leaks fast. Let's talk about what kind of prep we got to do to get this smoke machine to roll some smoke through this intake manifold and check for vacuum leaks. We're looking for drivability problems, we want to check for vacuum leaks. Let's go for it. Now, the first thing I want to do is block off where any air could get out of the intake system. We know where it can get in, but where can it get out? It can get out right here through the uh, feed from the air cleaner to the throttle body. And we'll take that off of the air cleaner and it's a little plastic insert that comes with the machine and the kits. Crank that down. I love the hose clamps with little levers on here. Little handle. Handy. All right, so that should block that off. Now I'm going to put some smoke in. If I don't have any leaks, I won't see any smoke come out. Now I think I'll grab a hose at the back of the intake manifold where we have our vacuum storage tank. Pop that off. Get a piece of rubber vacuum hose, 3 16 go on the end of our little cone from our smoke machine. And there's where we're going to insert smoke, at the back of that intake. So now, even if there is a little bit of an opening with the min air rate, the throttle plate open a tiny bit, we should still block the smoke from getting out here. And then we look for anywhere else the smoke might get out. Go ahead and get our machine ready to go. Hit the button, and let's see where the smoke comes out. Let's go ahead and get our light ready, too. Give it a few seconds, or maybe even a couple of minutes. 
we see some smoke right now. Right off the bat, I'm seeing smoke come out. Hey, and no wonder here, somebody has done a little bit of a little jury rigging of this vacuum hose connection at the side of the throttle body. That's definitely got to be fixed before this car leaves the bay. And we've got some other sources of leaks. Looks like, uh, hmm, I see a little bit of smoke. Yeah, there's an oil leak. Now, how do we get smoke in the oil? I'm putting smoke in the intake manifold. Well, what's in common between the crankcase and the intake manifold? PCV system. So we're even rolling smoke through the PCV system, and it's coming out my oil filler cap. And if we take a look underneath that, oh, well, no wonder. Oh, this car needs some work. We need a new valve cover, and we need a new vacuum fitting for these two hoses off the side of the throttle body. So let's go ahead and fix this, and we'll see if she smokes anywhere else. In fact, before we send somebody off to get the parts, I'm just going to pop that little jury rig mess of a hose fitting off, put my thumb over it, temporary fix, and see if it leaks anywhere else. It's just making the smoke go out the oil filler neck all the more from that broken valve cover. Well, I've got a technical tip here. We could just fix one leak or two leaks at a time. We know we're leaking here at this intake manifold fitting. And we know we're leaking a little bit of uh, crankcase vapors also. Need a new valve cover. But before I send the parts chaser after a couple of parts, maybe we need more parts. Let's get a complete list first. Let's plug up those leaks and see if we leak out any other places that may have been masked because of larger leaks. So just take some simple plastic. I don't care what you use, just some kind of rubbery plastic. Take some small pieces, stick it down in the hole where you know the leaks are. Here's a small piece for our manifold fitting, and let's roll the smoke again. We're going we're to buy a part here and a part here, and let's see if we need anything else. Smoke's rolling, let's get the bright light on, and lo and behold, we've got other leaks it looks like. Oh man, I've got a leak, something serious here. Oh, I've got a leak intake manifold leaking straight out from an intake manifold gasket and whoo I've got an injector looks like number two injector is leaking around the o-rings and I have a little bit of a leak oh and I got a split right here too it was holding when the other leaks were leaking but now it's leaking a little bit around the split so we definitely need a boot injector o-rings, intake manifold gasket, a fitting on the intake, and a new valve cover. We've got some work to do here. We got a good sale too. Well we had a lot of leaks. And in fact it became difficult to get the camera in there to see the injector leak. So that's where the Ultra, Ultra Trace UV dye comes in. So let's go ahead and put on our glasses, get our black light out, and look at some of that Ultra Trace UV dye. As you can see here, the injector right where it enters the bottom of the lower intake is leaking vacuum. We've got a vacuum leak there and you can also see what we were seeing really well with the smoke and that is the intake upper plenum leaking air as well. This thing's going to be running lean and compensating a lot in fuel trim. We just nailed this thing. The little black light, the right glasses, you can see a lot of things that maybe the normal eye can't. And that's the beauty of the dye. The dye that comes out with the smoke even if it was like a, a leak on the lower intake, when you take things apart, then you see the fingerprints, the evidence, if you will, of a leak. Makes you feel like, hey, I nailed this thing, and I know what gaskets to buy, what procedures to do. Now, the way we used to do things, we used to use gum out or some product like that to spray and listen for the engine to change speeds. Now, we can do it with smoke. We can actually see the leaks gum out might have caught that intake manifold gasket we might have missed the o-ring or vice versa so you take the upper plenum off you fix one thing you don't notice the other you put it back together only to find out you've got to do some work over again this re reduces your comebacks and fixes the car right the first time again really quick diagnostics really impressive results a good write-up a good fix customer's going to be happy you're going to be happy <laughs> We're going to use this Ford to demonstrate how we can use the smoke machine to find exhaust leaks. You put into the side you're going to do, run the smoke in, put our smoke machine 
into the end of the tailpipe probe. Make sure you do this if the, when the cat's cooled down. Otherwise, a fully lit off catalytic converter is going to do what its job is intended. It's going to eat smoke. You don't want that happening. So let it cool down a bit, roll some smoke in, and see where it leaks out. Well, didn't take long. I got my remote down here, right by the front of the muffler, and we've got a leak. Looks like we're going to have to put a new muffler clamp on at the very least. Maybe a muffler. Piece of cake. We've got a late model Saturn. The customers complain about a wind noise on the driver's side up around the door area around 35 miles an hour. Now normally, that'd be quite a diagnostic challenge. Wind noises and water leaks are really tough on diagnostics. So, we're going to use a smoke machine to show you how easy it can be. Now, we're not going to fill the inside of the car with smoke. That wouldn't be very practical. But what we are going to do on the inside of the car is turn the blower on high but we're going to make sure we're pulling fresh air in. So do not select recirc or max, but just have it on normal. Get a lot of air moving in the car. We're going to pressurize the cabin, and if any of the weather stripping or any windows or anything like that's leaking, it should deflect the smoke. Now, we're going to slow the smoke down, so to speak, this little deflector adapter that comes with the machines. So we'll turn the smoke on, and as a control, I'm just going to show you the door panel the smoke comes out kind of lazy and just makes its own little path. Now, let's go ahead and follow the weather stripping, starting up here at the A pillar. And it seems to pretty much not be deflected by much, if any. I don't really see it being pulled in or pushed away or moved from side to side. So it looks like that door panel, at least along the window, is okay. Let's go ahead and bring it down the B pillar. Oh, right here, I see quite a bit of turbulence. It's just puffing that smoke in different directions. Let's go ahead and move it down. Looks like it gets better as we go down the B-pillar. But at the top of the B-pillar, looks like I've definitely got some sort of leak going on there. Let's continue moving down that B-pillar. Doesn't look bad, doesn't look bad. And we'll get around here to the door seal. And let's just try a little control again. Looks like I've got some tornadic effect here. A little turbulence, let's move it to the side. That's what it ought to look like if there's no leak. And back this way, that's what it looks like when there's a leak. Simple, quick test. Well, it looks like this car is a good candidate for some weather stripping. Once again, the smoke machines proved to be the hero of the day. What used to be a very, very frustrating diagnostic procedure, wind noises and water leaks, now diagnosed quickly and efficiently. Thanks to a smoke machine. Well, that's just four easy, quick uses. Examples to show you how you can put a smoke machine to work outside of the EVAP world. We looked under the dash and we seen HVAC sealed vacuum circuit leaks. We looked under the hood and we found leaks for vacuum hoses. We found an intake manifold gasket leaking, fuel injector O-rings leaking, you name it. We even inadvertently, by putting smoke through the intake and seeing it come out through the PCV valve through the crankcase, found a bad valve cover. By the way, speaking of looking for oil leaks, be aware, not only you're looking for smoke and the dye, you also want to look for bubbling or dripping. Now, also in this program, we discovered that the smoke machine's great for finding exhaust leaks. Just put the old plunger in the back of that tailpipe, Put the smoke in there. If you have a dual exhaust, plug off the other side, and we find this leaky muffler clamp. Also, those most frustrating leaks, wind noises and water leaks, found one of those very quickly on the Saturn using some smoke as well. Let's take some more looks at all kinds of different uses, some of these still shots of smoke machines in action. Well, just like we were taking smoke and looking for the leaks under the dash in a closed circuit vacuum hose, same thing goes on with vacuum operated EGR valves. Another closed circuit system, a solenoid and a diaphragm. Roll some smoke in, see where it leaks out in that system. Here's a case where the diaphragm itself was leaking smoke right through it. Going to the back end of the vehicle, we can use the smoke as well on all kinds of axle and differential seals. Take the plug out where you normally check the fluid level, put the smoke in there crimp off the vent hose to the differential. Now, look around the pinion seals and the axle seals, see if you got smoke coming out. Tell you exactly where you're losing that differential fluid. 
all kinds of uses. They go on and on. The old cruise controls operated off a of vacuum, even older than that. Cars with vacuum operated power locks. There's no car too old or too new to use a smoke machine on. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of uses for the smoke machine. Really, the limit is your imagination. Well, we hope that takes some of the heartburn out of finding leaks, EVAP and otherwise, with smoke machines. For AVI, I'm Dave Hobbs. God bless and thank you so much for watching this training program. Uh, uh, uh.